Uh, and, you know, a lot of this deals with the folks in the environmental movement who who scare the heck out of people all the time. We're joined right now by Julie Gunlock. She's a senior fellow at the Independent Women's Forum. And uh, she's visiting us today, I believe, from uh, Virginia. Is that correct? That's right. Welcome in. Thanks for having me. So great to have you in the studio. I know. It's so fun to be in person. I, I'm um, so sorry for you, though, that you were on an airplane <laughs> during this news conference. And didn't I know. To see it. <laughs> uh, when I first saw you, I said, you know, I, I landed. I, you know, I checked my email. I, ch- I checked Facebook. And I checked Twitter. And I said, I picked the worst time to get on a flight because apparently this was the most entertaining thing and i totally missed it so i will definitely be watching a replay of it so social media lit up you get off the plane you (laughs) power your phone back up and people are like oh greatest news conference ever and as usual with donald trump it was you know both ends of the spectrum it was either absolute enthusiasm for what he had done or just shame and horror and crying uh, from certain sectors so you never have sort of a middle of the ground reaction it's either it's either complete horror or complete excitement and enthusiasm well of course you know you're always happiest when somebody completely agrees with you but i was thrilled to hear the president walk out and talk about uh, the executive order which is a little off the subject of what we're going to talk about here in a minute but what he said specifically today that i thought was important was yes i was given the content of the conversation with uh, with the russian um secretary whoever whoever he spoke to yeah. the undersecretary he said I didn't see anything illegal in it. Yeah. But when I found out that he hadn't mentioned that to the vice president, it just wasn't something we could put up with. So that's why he had to go. Yeah. And to make it anything more out of that is fake news. They, he kind of drew it back around to that point. That's right. If you're trying to connect this to the fact that the Russians helped Hillary Clinton win the election, right, all right. of that is fake news. He said, why don't you focus instead on the fact that somebody released signal intelligence, yeah. which is a serious felony crime in the yeah, United yeah, States. Yeah, it really is. And and I, I'm so glad that he brought it back to that point. And again, look, let's let's uh, let's be realistic here. The left and 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 people in Washington and the news media they are looking for the impeachable offense um, from the minute he was sworn in. They were looking for the impeachable offense. There have been meetings on the left and uh, among the Democrats. Um, where they are intent on getting him in trouble and finding ways in which to remove this man from office. So let's, you know, I I think I'm not surprised that we're seeing the hysterics about this issue. This is this is sort of the norm, um, and this is just the latest thing. I think he handled it. I mean, from what I've seen, I saw a couple clips, and from what you've said, um, he is smart to say, uh, let's let's move on, let's focus on some real important issues, and I yeah. think that's what the American public wants. It's a good point. Go, go to a cut number 19 for us, Liz, if you don't. Mind. I don't know if Julie heard this or not, but the, you mentioned the fact that it seems from the beginning to everybody, including Maxine Waters, wants to start talking about impeachment. Right, right, which, of which course. There has to be some crime committed to impeach somebody, right? right? Well, and you have... You, you have- Sally Cohn, who's a, who's a, a political commentator, saying, um, "Look, this is what we do: we impeach Trump and and the vice president, and then Hillary becomes president. It's, it doesn't work that way, <laughs> okay? You. It Thank doesn't you. actually work that way. I mean, I get it. She has the CNN contract, okay? Right. She's a big political commentator, but that's not how government works. And but that's exactly what they hope. They are still hoping for Hillary Clinton to be president, and whatever method is, uh, they'll they'll take whatever method necessary. Yeah, assuming they could take them both." Get both out with one impeachment, <laughs> it would be Paul Ryan then, right? That's the Speaker exactly of the House, right. correct? That's exactly uh, right. Anyway, but play, play this this Al Sharpton clip. Just listen to this, Julie. So you think we got a, we, we'll have enough to uh, impeach? Well, well if, there, if there is I get clear, yet? You, you should begin. Don't get excited yet. Just begin. <laughs> Just, Just begin. <laughs> Sharpton is wanting people yeah. to begin to get excited. He, yes. he smells blood in the yeah, water. He does. He does. And I mean, my, I, I try not to listen to Sharpton. My aunt, but um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, this is this is exactly what everyone should have predicted. All we, we listen to him for humor. Yeah. Uh, we're with Julie Gunlock from the Independent Women's Forum. She's in town uh, because she's going to attend an event uh, that is sponsored, I believe, by Monsanto. Correct. It's, it's actually sponsored by the Independent Women's Forum. Oh, it is. Okay. Washington right. University um, and Monsanto. So there's three sponsors. 
sponsors. It is being held on the campus of Washington University Clark Fox Forum in Hillman Hall on the Danforth campus at Washington University. Mm -hmm. Um, There is a reception beforehand at 530, and the panel will probably get started a little after 6. And we have some fantastic panelists. I am the moderator, but a couple faculty members from Washington University, um, uh, as well as Dr. Steve Savage. Um, If you're not familiar with him, he's sort of a myth buster, you know, that show Myth Buster. Right. Um, Well, he's a myth buster for food and sort of food myths and agriculture myths. He's absolutely fantastic. And then we have Joni Kamaya, all the way from Hawaii. She is um, part of a a papaya farming uh, family. And Amanda Amanda Zalucki is from a Michigan. She's a Michigan uh, farming family. Two of that, both of the the women on the panel are bloggers on food and agriculture. So lots of great uh, panelists um, and a lot of great content um, and real experts on these issues, actual experts on these issues. And I, I think I think that's what people really need. They need actually qualified people rather than sort of the fear mongering and the scaremongering we hear out there from unqualified sources. You, you hear all the time how difficult it is from from the drug companies to bring a drug to market sure. through all the testing of the, the yeah. FDA and all this. And yet people believe are led to believe by some environmental groups that the food they're putting on their table Such a great point. is is going to kill their families yeah. and things like so so when you talk about that what are you addressing specifically well, I- I want to kind of piggyback on your point, which I think is so good, is that people often don't understand the regulatory regime that's already in place and the safety measures and the massive amount of testing that has to that, that companies have to go through before they bring a pesticide to market that farmers can use or a new seed. Um, you know, we, we mentioned that Monsanto is part of, uh, part of this event tonight. I mean, the amount of testing and safety measures that they have to go through in order to bring a new seed or, or another product to market... But this goes beyond sort of agriculture products and agrochemicals. It's, I see it even with toys. I'm a mom. I see it with toys and and with bed sheets and with the clothing that my children use. I mean, I'm told that everything is going to kill them. It's not just food. I'm told everything from the McDonald's drive through to their pajamas to the toys they play with. We are living in a time of constant alarmism. And when you compare it to the actual data, we're living longer. We, cancer rates are down. Heart disease is down. I mean, crime is down. Literacy is up. Poverty is down. I mean, we are living in really good times. There should be constant good stories. All we hear are terrifying stories and terrifying messages about the products that are out there and the things that we use and eat every day. Yeah, the the genetically modified foods are something people that I see raised alarms about all the yes. time with um, but but on the you know on the good side of that there are always people that are going to raise these alarms on the good side of that p- people are growing crops where they couldn't grow crops That's before right. they, they they're grown to be uh, pest resistant in a lot of cases higher yield on yeah, less land the yield sure sure higher yield on less land there's a real environmental component but there's also a humanitarian component to this there are a lot of things um, and technologies that can be deployed that will really help people particularly in developing nations and that's something that we're actually going to get into on the panel tonight Dr. Laura Ionati she actually works in South America and in Africa and in Haiti and really ha- feels passionately about some of the technologies that can be deployed to help populations that deal with nutrient deficiencies and and that are that are really deal with you know hunger and starvation. So I think we're also going to get a little bit into that and talk specifically about the fears here in the United States, but also talk about how these technologies can be deployed to heart to help people. There's a lot of talk about fake news, yeah. and yeah. you know, I, I, and I'm I'm certain that that there's spin that goes on on both sides. Yes. I'm sure there is. But what are good resources for people where yeah. they can go? I mean, we, we don't know. I mean, if I read a story in the newspaper that says that somebody's concerned about a certain pesticide making it into the food system and this sort of thing, I, I don't, like, I've got my news resources that yeah. I go to, but I don't always have a good place to go for information like that. Well, I always say, you know, I actually write on, on these issues. I write on science issues and I write on um, um, I write, for instance, on vaccinations, but I am not an expert. I'm not a doctor. I'm 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 not a, a, a nutritionist or a farmer. Uh, but I often cite those who are. And so what I always tell people is be very careful about your sources. If you're interested in the biotech industry and GMOs, talk to a plant scientist or find them on Twitter.
Twitter or look for articles that are authored by actual plant scientists. For instance, there's a plant scientist named Kevin Fulta. Um, he does podcasts. He's very funny. He writes about these issues, and he's an educator, so he really knows how to sort of distill these complex issues into right. understandable messages. Also, talk to nurses. Talk to doctors. You know, don't get your vaccination information from Jenny McCarthy or Alicia <laughs> Silverstone. Talk to your doctor. You know, I mean, this seems common sense, but in the internet age, there it's a, it, the internet has been wonderful for giving people access to more information, but there's a downside. There's so much that now we have problems sifting through it. This is sort of fake news, and we have it on the other end as well. Environmentalists profit quite a lot by promoting the idea that GMOs are harmful and that some of the farming practices out there are harmful and that our food is poison. It's not true. And the minute you hear somebody like uh, from the Trump administration, for example, talking about wanting to come in and and affect re- the regulatory system that's yeah. in place, then people start to get worried that it's that it uh, decreases the threshold for protections on food and things like that. I think in many cases what they're talking about is the ability to get a business loan and some of the other things yes. that, that prevent people from in, uh, on their own farms from you're absolutely doing right. Doing business. You're absolutely right. And also, you you mentioned getting medications through. Look, there is mm-hmm. a there's a problem at the uh, at the FDA with actually getting some of these medications approved and letting people who are dying actually try experimental drugs. I mean, they're dying anyway. And there's actually a, there's actually there are laws that prevent them from trying um, trying medications that might save them. So that's I think what he's talking about, sort of loosening up sort sort of these these problems to people actually doing what they want, managing their own farms, producing food, producing products. You know, look, I'm a stay-at-home mom I right. you know it's it's nice to be able to have the freedom to to like maybe if I want to bake cookies or make soaps and there are actual regulations that say I can't do that I'm not allowed to do that so that's what we're talking about when kind of loosening up these regulations yeah that's a good point uh, Julie Gunlock t- t- give us the details again if uh, people want to is this something the public can show up to yes it is and I'll okay, give you the good. easiest way to find out the details if you go to iwf.org it's the organization that I work for not only will you find good information on a number of subjects but if you go to the events tab at the top um You'll find all the information and and how to RSVP and the address and the time and all of that. Again, it's IWF.org and all the details are there. Very good. That's easy to remember. The Independent Women's Forum. Uh, Julie Gunlock, thank you so much. Enjoy your brief trip to St. Louis, huh? (laughs) That's great. I might not leave. It's so nice here today. You've got great weather. No (laughs) kidding. We don't often get this in the middle of February. Let me tell you what. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's great to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll get to some.